I believe that that clearly happened because he was illogical, he was irrational, and he was in a withdrawal state. Do you know what Michael Jackson, 50 Cent, and Mike Tyson have in common? They all had a huge problem with debt, with some even declaring personal bankruptcy due to their financial troubles. How the heck is that possible? These are celebrities that everyone knows, earning massive amounts of money. Yet, they still struggle with their finances. At the time of Michael Jackson's death, an expert estimated he owed $400 to $500 million, despite earning $2.1 billion during his career, adjusted for inflation. In 2005, it was said that on the $270 million in debt that he had, he was making $4.5 million a month in payments. So what that meant is he got on a never-ending treadmill of debt and couldn't get himself out again. Most people focus on how to make more money, but what's the point if we can't handle it? Debt can be useful in certain situations. It can help us buy things when we don't have the capital at the moment. For example, a mortgage allows us to buy a house. The problem arises when people misuse debt to buy unnecessary stuff. Take a look at Mike Tyson's spending habits, he once spent $2.2 million on a golden bathtub for his ex-wife or bought two white Bengal tigers. Uh, what was going through my mind? Yeah. I don't know what made me think about my friend said, Mike, you can get some awesome animals. And I think, really? Are you That's why this video explores what school forgot to teach us about money. What is money? To understand the meaning of money, we have to go back thousands of years. Imagine you owned a farm that produced grain, and your neighbor made knives and other tools. Every month, you'd exchange grain for tools, benefiting both of you. Eventually, people realized this barter system wasn't efficient, leading to the creation of money. Money's purpose has always been to facilitate commercial transactions. You produce something of value and exchange it for money, or you use money to buy products or services. So, money is essentially a medium for transferring value and conducting business with goods and services. Your finances are straightforward. One part of the equation is what you produce. In our example, the farmer produced grain. The other part is what you consume, like buying horses and tools in our case. In other words, everyone has income and expenses. The relationship between what you produce and what you consume determines how much money you have left. Returning to the celebrities we discussed earlier, their financial problems were not due to a lack of income. All of these celebrities earned substantial incomes during their careers. The problem was on the expense side. About this table. This chess set. Isn't it beautiful, this set? Your chess set in, in your library is... No, this one's bigger. This, this is bigger. bigger. Okay, did we get those? I don't believe... I like those. Okay. Why don't we order those? Right. Yeah, yeah, I like those. Have you got enough of space for all of this? Yeah, I, I do. You've got space? Yeah. And we'd like In the these? house in Neverland, or...? No. This would be for another house. Oh, for another one? Yeah. Okay. It's like you yeah. surround yourself with stuff that's like an emperor's house, isn't it? What? It's like uh, Louis Fourteenth. It's my taste. Yeah. Many people focus on maximizing their incomes, which is not a bad thing, but there's another equally important part of the equation, expenses. Consider your situation, income, and expenses, and think about which side of the equation needs improvement. Even rich Americans earning over $250,000 per year are increasingly living paycheck to paycheck. These individuals have incomes of over $5.5 million per year, yet 36% report financial difficulties. The reason is simple, they overspend. So, how can you regain control of your finances? The first step is to examine your costs and income. Do you know how much you spend monthly on housing, transportation, groceries, restaurants, clothing, and other expenses? Knowing what you spend on each category is the first step to getting your expenses under control. You can create a budget for each category, aiming to have some money left at the end of the month. In English, this is called, living below your means. Why would someone want to live above their means, accumulating debt every month? Perhaps it won't surprise you, but the answer lies in psychology. We constantly compare ourselves to others. If our neighbor buys a new car, we buy one too. If a colleague gets a new phone, we get an even better one. We want the latest and most expensive clothing to impress others. In the past, this behavior was limited to those we physically met in our town or village. In today's internet age, it takes just 10 minutes on social media to compare ourselves to thousands of people. No wonder many people have lost control of their spending. On the other hand, living below your means allows you to save and invest some money before spending it. 
There's one thing often recommended in personal finance, the emergency fund. It's money you set aside for unexpected expenses or job loss. Having three to six months worth of income in your emergency fund provides a psychological cushion. You know that if you lose your job, you have enough savings to find a new one without stress. Get you some money. It's called an emergency fund is one of your first steps. Get you some money. Get yourself out of debt. Quit buying crap that you can't afford with money you don't have to impress people you don't really like. Stop it. Get you some money because the storms are coming. We've learned that people focus too much on increasing their income. But as we've explained, expenses are just as important. There's another equally vital aspect of personal finance, investing. After subtracting your expenses from your income, ideally, you should have some money left. Once you've built your emergency fund, it's a good idea to invest that money and aim for growth. If you leave it sitting in a bank account, inflation will gradually erode its value. The goal of investing is to make your money work for you. You don't need to be a stock market expert to start investing. There are various investment options, such as real estate, buying stocks, or bonds. I focus on stock market investing, which I believe is the simplest way for beginners to start. Yeah, you have to buy businesses, and you, or little pieces of businesses called stocks, and you have to buy them at attractive prices, and, and you have to buy them, and you have to buy into good businesses, and that advice will be the same a hundred years from now in terms of investing. That's that's what it's all about, and you can't expect anybody else to do it for you. When you own a share of a company's stock, you have a piece of that company. For example, owning one share of Apple means you own approximately 0.0000006% of Apple. This entitles you to a proportionate share of the company's future profits, which is quite cool when you think about it. You can own a piece of a great company like Apple, and instead of letting your money depreciate in a bank account, you can benefit from Apple's profits. You've probably heard the phrase, money makes money. It's true. When you buy a property, you earn rental income, which you can use to buy more properties and earn more rental income, and so on. In essence, I've just summarized the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in one sentence. You read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. What's lesson number one? Rich people don't work for money. Correct. So, what have we learned? Most people focus on how much they can earn, and that's undoubtedly an important aspect of personal finance. However, as we've seen through the examples of celebrities, income alone is not enough. Personal finance also has another critical component, expenses. You can control your expenses, but you must know exactly what you spend each month. Once you have that overview, you can work to improve your financial situation. The money left after deducting expenses from income can be saved in an emergency fund or invested to seek growth. This is what school won't teach you. Unfortunately, that's the reality. Thank you for watching up to this point. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it will help as many people as possible. What school failed to teach you in a world of textbooks and testing is the substance of life, resilience, knowledge of finances, and emotional intelligence. Don't let it stop you. Subscribe today, share this information, and let us strengthen ourselves for a better future. Thank you very much, and see you next time.